How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. In this third and final address on our conference theme, The Hope of Glory, the lens I wish to use to invite reflection is Christ, Prince of Peace. Today, I do not so much mean a focus on the mediatorial aspect of how this peace is affected through Christ's sacrifice on the cross, and nor do I intend dwelling here on the nature of this peace as a form of reconciliation between God and his creation, but rather I wish to ponder the link between peace and rest in a life that is first directed towards God. Christ makes an invitation to us to know the peace of God, and this is a peace which surpasses all understanding. When we think of peace, we often think it's something to be achieved by action or activity. We also think it needs to be the main object of our attention if it is to materialise. If we're asked the question, what is peace? We tend to answer in the negative. Peace is the absence of war, or peace is freedom from turmoil. The truth is we struggle to give peace any of its own content. Now, noting the struggle, some <coughs> philosophers have described peace as a trust in the efficacy of beauty, or peace, a virtue born out of the heart. An improvement, certainly, but still a bit vague. In Christ, we have a blessing of peace from God. I wonder how you think of this peace. In our scriptures, we also know that this peace from and in Christ means that the Holy Spirit is at work in us. So we know that the peace won is not simply a settlement deal of a past falling out, if you like, but that this peace characterises or lends a particular quality to our lives that are hid in Christ with God. So there's something present and ever active to the peace we have in Christ. So what is this peace then? In the Bible, peace has deep roots and origins both in Hebrew and in Greek. There is a richness in meaning that goes beyond peace as the absence of conflict, encompassing completeness instead and welfare and significantly, implying making restitution, returning to a state of wholeness. Peace in the Bible is not simply about changes in external circumstances, but is more about inner transformation. St Augustine wrote that our lives are marked by a certain restlessness as a consequence of original sin. And that this restlessness has created a longing for peace. We live disorderly lives and can often find that peace remains elusive to us as long as we regard it as a direct object of choice. It's almost like that if we make it the sole object or target of acquisition, we miss it. Try too hard, it escapes us. Peace is a bit like how writer Nathaniel Hawthorne describes happiness. It's like a butterfly, which when pursued is always beyond our grasp. But if you sit down quietly, may a light upon you. We can't simply choose peace the way we might pluck an apple from an apple tree. We have to almost choose something else before we're able to experience peace. 
and I like what St. Augustine says here. He says that the something else is order. Augustine describes peace as tranquility of order. Well, what does he mean here? And what kind of order? Well, Augustine means virtuous acts that lead to God. And we know, we will know Augustine's most celebrated uh, phrase that appears at the beginning of his confessions, our hearts are restless and will not rest until they find rest in you. So peace replaces restlessness when our lives are directed to God. So rest in God, rest in God, and peace in our hearts are linked. And the focus then is not so much on works, but the direction of one's life as first to God, which in turn, Augustine emphasises, is to live in accordance with virtue, that is, the order of love. So if we want peace, we must first direct our love to God. Then we will experience the tranquility of order that is peace. So what is peace then? It is the tranquility we experience once we direct our love through virtue to God. When we put our trust in God, that is when we surrender our fears, our worries to him, we can experience his blessing of peace. And this loving of God includes loving our neighbour too. So we can begin to see, I hope, how peace can touch all aspects of our lives and lives of others. So in thinking about peace, we discover that we shouldn't be searching for it, but loving God. Peace is something that happens to us when we've found something else. Peace is a blessing. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Amen. Amen.